in this short video about the uh, product topology on um, an arbitrary collection of uh, topological spaces. So the product topology on, I'll just say many topological, well, maybe I'll say it this way, on a big product. So in the previous video, I talked about how do you do the product topology on two topological spaces? Can you do the product of two topological spaces? But you know, what if we took the Cartesian product of infinitely many? And so, um, for finitely many things in your product, everything works like it did in the previous video. Um, but now we're going to have, again, we need to write some things down as far as what's the setting that we're in. We're going to let maybe something like um, x alpha t alpha, where alpha it's just some index. So maybe these are indices, maybe these are numbers, maybe these are other ways to um, kind of enumerate in some way that I've just got a whole bunch of topological spaces. The um, index family of topological spaces. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the product. So um, how to put a topology on the product of all the x alphas. So how do we do that? And there's two ways to do that. So one idea is called the box topology. And so the idea of the box topology is, okay, each individual, like let's pretend these aren't alphas, let's pretend these are ones and twos and threes. So like x1 has a topology. And uh, so what I'll say is the box topology um, what it's going to be is box topology. I'll tell you about its basis. So again, the basis are kind of like, what are the fundamental sets that I need to tell you that are open? Once I tell you what the basis elements are, then you can make anything else that's called open. So for the box topology, um, the uh, has basis uh, of the form Say it this way, products with alpha in my uh, index set, say u alpha, where u alpha is in t alpha. So that would be an example of a basis element from the product topology. So maybe I could try to rewrite this a little bit. Uh, so it has basis with elements of the form. So with elements of the form, again, products of these things, u alpha, where each u alpha is in t alpha. And then number two, I wanna write down, what is the product topology? And so uh, what will this be? It's kind of similar, except at some point I, uh, not allowed to use said u alpha. So what is another way to say that then? So the way that I'll say this is has basis with elements of the form. I'm gonna write it the same way. So product alpha and lambda u alpha where Two things happen. One, u alpha is still in t alpha for every alpha, but now the second thing that happens is the key. I'm gonna require that u alpha is equal to the entire space that you came from for all but finitely many alpha. I'll try to give you an example of what I mean by this. Finitely many alpha. But this is the difference between the two. Right, so maybe what you see is that there are no restrictions on what's going on for the box topology here. There are no restrictions on the uh, components that I can take in this product here. Where I'm trying to say here, here's my product. I'm telling you that there's a pretty big restriction on the components. And how you should read this is that eventually each of these U's is just again the entire space that it came from. And so let me give you, again, a quick example. Maybe it's not quick, we'll see. 
so let me give you an example let me say so weird stuff happens when we start taking infinite products that's kind of the point of uh, this little section so let's say that's x1 equals r x2 equals r x3 equals r etc so i'm going to use numbers to enumerate my sets and so each with usual topology now what do I mean by that then so I'm thinking like intervals like a to b to open that's what I mean by this all right so for the box topology let me give you an example so in the box topology something like so maybe in the box topology on what the box topology on the product so what am i going to do i'm going to take r cross r cross r cross blah 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 so this infinite product of r with itself this infinite dimensional topological space if you want to think of it that way so in the box topology on this thing what we're allowed to do is we're just going to pick an open set from here we'll pick an open set from here and the point of the box topology is there's no restrictions on what you can do so something like let's say the interval 0 1 cross I don't know 2 3 cross 0 1 again I'm just randomly picking stuff and maybe I'll pick one more that's super random negative 5 10 cross etc this is a perfectly good basis element it is a basis element whereas 2 is not a basis element in the product topology it's not a basis element so what is that thing it's not a basis element in the product topology so what would it have to look like what do basis elements in the product topology look like so something like maybe zero one times two three times zero one Etc. But eventually, what's got to happen? So that's what these dots say. Eventually, all the rest of the components have to just look like all these copies of R again. So I'm not allowed to be specific anymore. So to come back up here, I'm saying that with with these dots to the right, I could keep doing crap like this if I wanted to. So the box topology again, there's no restrictions. But for the product topology, I'm requiring that again, eventually. In other words, for all but finitely many is what it's saying, right? There's infinitely many this way, but at some point, you know, there's only finitely many this way. Think of it that way if you want. Eventually, all of these components are just the whole space R itself. So this is like, each one of these is like an X alpha. I hope that makes that a little bit more clear about what's going on. Now, if you're like, why do we, what's the difference like between these two? Why is one preferred over the other? Uh, it turns out that the, the second one here is actually uh, maybe a little bit more better behaved and so probably won't get into this too much but if you note the box topology does not play nicely with continuous functions so in other words a nice concept of what we take for granted as being continuous actually breaks down in the box topology and the product topology is in some sense the smallest topology on a product space that will play nicely with continuous functions and i'm being really vague about this on purpose because you won't be you won't need to get too far into the weeds a product space that does play nicely Uh, with continuous functions.